Hi everybody, it's Pam with Silver and Sparkles, and today I have a tutorial for us. We're going to alter a little golden book and turn it into a junk journal, one that starts like this. So I have a sample to show you really quick so you get a sense of what we're making. Um, this is a, a travel themed junk journal that I've been, I've been wanting to make one for a while and it worked out great because Pink Monarch Prince November subscription kit had um, travel themed uh, papers and so it just worked out perfectly and I have this little golden book so this one is I believe from 1961 um, let's see yeah 1961 and it's about a little boy going on his first airplane ride with his mom. So, um, it I think it turned out great. It's super cute. Um, we'll do a quick flip through so you can kind of see. I used all kinds of uh, vintage papers, uh, papers from the kit, added lots of pockets. Um, there's so much more I could I, I could keep going and you know and decorating and um, adding to it but I certainly left enough for whoever has this journal one day to hopefully journal about their adventures and add their own pictures and um, ephemera plenty of tuck spots and pockets and and space to do all of that um, it's just I, th I think the papers are so pretty so anyway, um, it'll get somebody started, hopefully, and get them thinking about what, what, what they want to do. And of course, the little golden book pages are a little fragile. They're from 1961, but I think they're holding up okay. Um, somebody could certainly go back through and reinforce some of the vintage paper if they wanted to. I did that with several sheets um, just to make them a little sturdier. So anyway, I didn't want to cover up all the cute images from the book, though. Isn't that pretty? All right, so today we are going to attempt one of these. I just wanted you to kind of have a sense of what we were making um, with Rudolph. And this Rudolph book, um, I love it, is in a little bit better shape than a lot of the golden books I, I've worked with. This one is from 1985, so it's not quite as vintage-y, but I guess that's still old. Um, okay, so let's hope I can remember what I'm doing. So if you wanna, want, if you wanna make one of these, um, you're gonna need a little golden book. Uh, if you wanna make just a journal that's this size and just use chipboard and cover it or do whatever you could do that too, I guess. Um, so I wrote down a couple of things. Um, the, the first thing we have to do is take the book apart. And I'm hoping I can remember everything that I did. Um, is take the book apart and then you are going to need some um, kind of chipboard or uh cardboard you could even use this is like I think from a paper pack or something or a pad of paper um you could use like a cereal box you're, it's going to be completely covered you're not going to see it so it's a great way to use um, our mailers right the the thicker mailers maybe glue a few of those together there's lots of ways to recycle materials that would otherwise um get thrown away so you will need a piece of chipboard and I measure I've gone ahead and cut it but I measured the height of the golden book is seven and seven eighths inches and this is going to become the spine so you want a piece that is seven and seven eight inches tall and I've made mine five and a half so all of my measurements are going to be based on on this size chipboard let me show you really quick because I like to keep the little golden tape there. Instead of having a spine that wraps on the outside, this one goes to the inside. Okay, so if you see, look at this, you can see this is where the five and a half inches come in. Um, it, it comes um, on the inside and it holds it really nice and sturdy and then you see a portion of the spine there. Okay. Um, Okay, so a piece of chipboard, seven and seven eighth inches by five and a half. Okay, and then you're going to need some type of pretty paper that you're going to cover it with. And again, I'm going back to you. I did a Santa's toy shop uh, junk journal, 
um, in November, getting ready, getting in the holiday spirit, and I used the Let's Be Jolly paper pack and um, paper kit by Joey Cardmaker on Etsy. And I'm going back and using that same kit again because I think it's gonna just look so cute with Rudolph. So this is going to be the outside part of the spine that you see on the outside. I thought those little packages and they coordinate with the Rudolph colors. You need that piece to be the seven and seven eighths that I just talked about, okay, by five and a quarter. And then the inside piece, and the trees are going to be going horizontally. Couldn't help that the way I printed it. Um, the trees are going to be, or this piece that's going to be the inside is actually bigger. It's nine by six and a half, nine inches by six and a half, because it is going to cover, we're going to wrap this entire piece of cardstock with it. Okay? All of this is gonna make sense soon. So basically two pieces of decorative paper, scrapbook paper, something like that. Something that's pretty that you like to see and a piece of chipboard. When we get to those, we'll go over the measurements again. Okay, and then your golden book. Um, I guess if you decide to just do chipboard and cover it, you would need seven and seven eighths, two pieces that are seven and seven eighths by Six and let's see. Hmm. La 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 la. Um, did I even say that right, y'all? Y'all are gonna laugh at me. Um, yeah, that was seven and seven eighths. Oh, okay. Um, six and one, two, three four and five eighths, okay? Six and five eighths if you wanna just use some cardboard or something instead of a golden book. All right, hope I didn't confuse you. All right, so the first thing I have to do is figure out a way to pull this book apart. And the oldie, the old ones come apart pretty easily. Um, I don't know how easily Rudolph's gonna come apart because like I said, Rudolph is in pretty good shape. Um, this is one that I got on eBay. I feel a little bad pulling it apart, but it'll be all right. Um, like I said, the old ones tend to just pry apart pretty easily. They're stapled, so there is a staple in here. We've got to get out. Um, the other day I started making a video Okay, we are recording. And I got, I don't know, 20 minutes in and realized I hadn't really pushed record. Ooh, look, it just came apart. So I decided I better check that really quick. Oh, no. All right, there is a way to save this. And we'll, I'll get to show you how to do that. So that's a good thing, right? Mm. This staple was not letting go, man. All right. So we need to get our pages out of here. And I think we've actually got, oh, we're okay. We are okay. Um, we're going to set these aside because these are going to actually go in the journal later when we do the signatures and all that. And that will probably be another video that I'll show you kind of how I'm picking the papers and getting the signatures ready and sewing those in. I've done videos before about how to sew signatures into journals, but um, we could do it again. It won't hurt to do it again. All right, let me see what I got here. If you want to actually get the staples out and see how long they are, you have to um, pull the 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 um this little part the golden label up but I'm going to show you hopefully a trick to do that normally I wait to do this we're going to go ahead and do it um because it ripped anyway we're going to go ahead and just use my exacto knife and go ahead and cut that apart so now we have this that is in need of a repair poor thing um 
but it's not the end of the world. Because if you remember, this piece of cardboard is gonna be glued to it, reinforcing it really well, okay? And we still have to get the staples out. I think I'm gonna go ahead and add a little glue to this to let it start sticking back together or getting happy being back together. So I hope you can see me on camera. I am getting glue right along this edge and I'm being generous with it. All this is gonna be covered up anyway. This is just to help a little bit with the integrity. So if you have something like this happen in the middle of your project, don't like go, oh gosh, I gotta throw this one away or this one won't work. There's usually always a way to fix it. And I have had one where this entire panel came off and I was able to just glue it to the internal spine. Now this part will show and it just makes it look a little more worn. We might add a little ink to it, but it's obviously been torn and that's okay. Again, vintage guys. <laughs> but I'm gonna seal it up a little bit with some glue and we're gonna set it aside while we're working on these other pieces. Okay, now, if you know where your heat gun is or your hair dryer, you can heat this a little bit and these will pull up. And my heat, and then you can pull the staple out. My heat gun is hiding. We don't know where she is. So your other option, I do prefer to pull these out, but your other option is to press them down as flat as you can get them. And I'm using, um, oh, that worked pretty well. This is a ribbon or a slot punch. It makes that little slot and then a pretty piece of ribbon will flip right in the hole that it makes. Um, but it's metal, it's not plastic. So I'm using it for my tool of choice here to really push these metal staples down. Oh, they're laying really flat, so I'm okay with that. I've had old, old rusty ones. This, the, the staples get rusty in the old golden books. I'm surprised these haven't. Um, and then they like stick up and you don't want that. <laughs> um, these are laying flat though, so they're doing well. Okay, now the other thing we wanna do as much as possible is wrap this around and glue it down. We're gonna do it on the other side too. So I'm kind of, I don't know, just flipping it up here. And by the way, y'all, I don't know, maybe a year or so ago when I did my first one like this, I watched a video and I wish I could find her video. I could probably search for it on YouTube where a lady showed how to do this. So this is not my idea, y'all. Um, and if you know who it is, you know, be, <laughs> feel free to comment and then I can tag her or something. But, um, you know, she, she had a video showing how to do this. Um that was super helpful. I've probably changed a few little things here and there, maybe, maybe not. <laughs> um, you know, just that work for me. But, um, you know, you can find just about anything um, if you look. Sometimes you have to watch quite a few to find one that's gonna work the way you want it to. Um, but anyway, I remember I really liked how she did the binding because, um, I love leaving the, the gold part, and I liked the look of how the spine turned out. Now, I love doing exposed spines, especially when I have multiple um, signatures. And in these, we're doing a two-inch spine. So I'm doing five signatures, which is a lot more work than doing one or two or three. Um, but it's okay because I love how it looks. But if you don't like the exposed spine look or if you just have a couple of signatures and you think it would look better to hide that spine, this kind of binding works really well for that too. And again, I've got videos on how to do both. You may just have to search. At some point, I'm gonna try to organize my tutorials a little better to make it a little easier for y'all to find things. But um, for now, this is what we have. All right, there's a little more glue in there. 
Um, and again, it's a junk journal. It, it's okay if it's a little, you know, a little frayed or looks a little different. But um, I, I'm gonna use some washi tape with some glue to reinforce this a little bit. But I, um, I like to get it glued down if I can. All right, this again is all gonna be covered up, so don't freak out when you see the cover, the color I'm choosing. This is just to give it just a touch more um, stability while I'm constructing. I'm not, I'm not pressed about it because like I said, my whole spine is gonna be attached to this and give it enough reinforcement. Okay. Okay, so now we have this ready to go and we're gonna set it aside because we don't need it right now as, along with those inside pages. Now, if you have a scoreboard, this next part's gonna be a little bit easier. If you don't, you can always use um, a ruler and um, a bone for folder or the non-sharp side of your exacto knife can help you score. And there, there's other ways to do this without, if you don't have a scoreboard. I'm gonna use my scoreboard because I have one and it makes my life a little bit easier. Okay, so the first thing we're gonna do is on your piece of chipboard, again, seven and seven eighths by five and a half. We're gonna score it at one and three quarters so one and three quarters and at three and three quarters okay and what this does is it leaves you a two inch spine this is going to be your spine and the same amount um, on either side because it'll be wrapped but you will see this okay and then you just want to fold it good um, to make it nice and flexible. All right, so I just crease it both ways. Okay. So you have that. It's going to be your spine, and it's going to get covered. Okay, so for the piece that you're going to see on the inside, that piece of pretty paper, it is nine by six and a half. So we're gonna score it, place it on that six and a half inch side, and we're gonna score it two and one quarter, two and a quarter, and four and a quarter, and that isn't really my score tool for this. Hopefully it did okay. I think it really matters. All right, so again, when we fold this, you will see we have a two inch section. All right. Yay. All right. So that was two and a quarter and four and a quarter. All right. And then I'm gonna go ahead and score the next piece so I can put my scoreboard away. This is the piece that you're gonna see on the outside of the spine. This one is seven and seven eighths, so the exact height of your book, by five and a quarter. We're scoring it at one and five eighths and three and five eighths. So one, what did I say? <laughs> One and five eighths. So one, two, three, four, five. One and five eighths. And three and five eighths. Three. One, two, three, four, five. Okay. I don't take anything for granted. I count it out and make sure. Now all of these are going to make that spine. Aren't these papers pretty? 
I'm just so happy um, to get to use them. They're so pretty. So that's the part we'll see. And then, of course, I'm going to sew my signatures in, and you'll see that. Okay. Oops. That score tool. Pick that up in a minute. All right. So now we got to cover it. And, um... So this is gonna be the piece that'll be on the inside of the book. Okay, and we're gonna wrap it. Now, I like to do a combination, and I'm probably gonna have to get it and get prepared, um, of the two-sided tape and some wet glue, some wet white glue. And again, I know many of you have been following me, but if you're new around here, my favorite wet white glue is this. It's art glitter glue. And I just put it into these little bottles and things so that um, they're, it's easier to work with. And then this is some two-sided tape. Um, I'll make sure I link this stuff for you guys in the description. Um, Actually, I'm going to tell you how I'm going to do that in a moment. But um, Score Pal really is my favorite two-sided tape. This is a different brand. I'm finding it's working just fine for me. It's a little bit less expensive. Um, so anyway, I did start um, the Amazon um, storefront or whatever where if you use my link and buy some things, I do get a little bit of a payment. It's not a lot, but every little bit helps, right? When you're doing an art business. Um, but if you go there, um, you'll see I've got different lists and things that you can shop from. And like I said, no pressure, but if you're gonna be buying glue or tape or scissors or whatever, anyway, I sure would appreciate your support. But anyway, if you go there, you'll see um, my favorite supplies and things that I use a lot um, and make it easy for you to check them out. And then whether you purchase or not is up to you. But anyway, I'll make sure the link to my, my shop um, is there in the description um, so y'all can find the um, tape and the glue and stuff if you'd like to. Um, let's see. Um, so... I do like, I, you probably are saying, Pam, you're overkill with the tape. I am putting a lot of tape, but um, I like it to be nice and smooth. And then when we go to stick it to the actual book, I'm going to do the same thing. I could probably get away with just one here. Um, I'm going to use quite a bit. So, um, again, it's kind of personal preference how, you, you know, if you do just glue, if you do t just tape, um, or you do a combination. I do like to burnish it really well so that it, it sticks really well to this um, chipboard. Um, but... By by doing both, I know it's really nice and secure um, and, again, smooth. Sometimes, and that's what I realized I was in the center thing, um, the glue will dry and not be as sticky. Like when you go to sew through it, right, the tape will stay sticky. And so a lot of people do not like to use the tape on the part where they'll be like pulling a needle through because it does get a little gummy. It doesn't really hurt anything. It's just not as pleasant for your tools um, or for your piercing tool when you're punching the holes in um, where the glue, if you give it time to dry, you know, it'll be dry and it won't make your tool sticky. So that's something to think about when you're making a decision <laughs> on what you're doing. Okay, now that one of the reasons too, I like to then add some glue to this. Um, is then it gives me a little bit of grace if I make a mistake in how I'm sticking it down. Um, but, okay, I'm guessing it is hard for you guys to see where my creases are on camera. I don't know, because I'm not looking at what you're seeing. But this is not, you're not going to see this uh, distress ink that I just put on there. This is more just for the video so y'all can see when I'm lining it up, what I'm doing. Okay. Now I'm going to add on top of this tape, some wet white glue, the art glitter glue. 
and this will give me, it, it dries really fast too, so I've got to move kind of quickly, but it will give me a little bit of wiggle room with this um, score tape. Won't budge once it sticks. The glue makes it slip around a little bit <laughs> until it dries, right? Um, but we'll be okay. And again, then I'm also gonna be sewing signatures through this too, so the paper ain't gonna go anywhere. But. Okay, well, let's hope we got this. Now I'm gonna eyeball it. I wanna get it lining up with these score lines so that it'll bend really nice and about the same amount, top and bottom. Because we're just gonna wrap it like a little present. And let's hope, go ahead and fold it to make it start living the way you want it to, it does well. Okay, we got it lined up nicely. Um, there's my bone folder. Go ahead and give it a nice crease. Really burnish it well. Get in there. Okay. So I hope by marking y'all could see what I did there. Okay. So now this is something I do remember the lady I watched did. Um, she cut some little slats to make it easier. And I've been using that technique when I wrap this. But first, we're going to cut. Again, we're going to use the um, X-Acto knife. And we're going to cut these corners off. And again, you don't have to have one of these little tools but it does make life easy and you don't accidentally get too close to the corner where then it doesn't wrap nicely. Um, but you can also just take your scissors and snip it carefully, okay? So optional tool there, but not a very expensive one if you like it. All right. So then on these, we're just gonna snip right in that, kind of in that score line, and then angle it just a little bit. I hope you can see that. So I'm snipping right at the score line, and then I'm angling it in just a little bit, so that when we go to fold this up, you don't get a weird gap where it won't fold nicely. All right, so I'm gonna do the same thing on this side. Um, and again, if you don't do this, it'll still wrap. You just may get a little bit of gathering that you may or may not want. Probably don't want. <laughs> okay, I do tend to take my bone folder and again, just go around and, and score the edges against this chipboard, it's just gonna make folding the paper a little bit easier. And depending on how thick your decorative paper is, that this may or may not be, you know, important for you. But it folds nice. And again, it's just kinda like wrapping a present, but don't worry about this part because once we get all this glue down, then this one's going to go over it and be our outside. I hope it's, you, you're starting to see the vision here. All right, these pieces, uh, and I'm going to show you my, again my trick on how to make the corners nice and neat. So usually you can start with the short edge or the long edge. I usually do the long edge. Again, you can put a piece of two-sided tape right here. I'm just going to use my glue because this is going to get wrapped on top of yet again. So I think I'm okay with this just being glue. All right. Get your bone folder or like a, a, a pen, you know, that's empty or you can just use the, the tip of it um, so you don't mark on it. But what we're going to do is just kind of nudge this piece over and I hope you can see what I'm talking about I'm in, on the camera. I'm just kind of nudging it over and then when I go to fold it up 
it makes a really nice corner, okay? And we'll do this, and then before I glue this one up, I'll nudge this corner. Okay, so we're gonna glue, and because these are cut into three sections, they're pretty easy to glue down. And you, again, you wanna make sure they're not going anywhere. spread out. All right, now we're going to nudge the corner again. Check it. Make sure you like how that looks. It just makes it look a little bit nicer. If you've ever done this, you know what I'm talking about. That little bit that just gets kind of weird and pointy. And I know I've shown you guys that before but I never know when, maybe it's somebody new to my channel that hasn't watched the other videos yet and they don't know why I'm messing with the paper like that. All right, so I've nudged that one. Now this time we have two, both sides need to be nudged because the side's already glued down. And again, make sure you like it before you add your glue. Both of those look nice to me, so they're ready to go. And again, I'm being generous with my glue. I, I don't want this to go anywhere. I don't want whoever ends up with this journal it coming apart. Not that a little glue wouldn't fix it, but you hate to have somebody to have to do that. Okay, so again, this is going to be the inside spine. The signatures will be coming out of here. This is the outside. So now we're going to do the same thing. We are going to line this up. Um, with the um, to, to cover this up and remember this none of this is going to show okay um, just this part all right now you'll, you'll see why here in a minute but you, you just want to make sure you get it lined up with your where it's scored on the, the cardboard and scored on your paper all right, so this one, we're going to use a combination of tape and glue again, which I know it's super fun to watch me put tape down on paper, but this will make sure we get a really nice edge. Now this one, again, this paper goes right to the top of your spine on the outside. Let me show you what I'm talking about here. And this is why I kind of lifted that piece up. I didn't on this side. Let me show you what I'm talking about. So see how nice that edge is because I taped and glued it and it looks really nice. We want this one to look just as nice. So I'm going to make sure we really have our adhesive the way we want it and we line it up really pretty, okay? So get it as close to the edge as you can. You will be happy with your results if you do. Um, and I'm gonna put a piece on either side of here. And then that center, I am gonna just use white glue but I'll be quite generous with it. And that way, because it'll also then have thread coming through, so it's not going to go anywhere. But I don't have to worry about it going through my, uh, my needle, going through another whole layer of tape. Okay. And if you wonder what this is, this is a, one of the spatulas. Um, it's a Cricut tool um, that, you know, helps you pick when you cut things out with your Cricut or lift them up off of the sticky mat. And I have found it is a great tool for helping peel up the two-sided tape. <laughs> All right, and you guys probably already knew that. I think there's other tools that do this as well. 
but that's one that I have and didn't have to buy something else. Okay. So we're gonna add glue on top of the tape a little bit to get, again, give me a little wiggle room. A little bit of wiggle room. And then because I don't have any tape, get it nice to the edge, we can wipe it off if we have to. I'm gonna be quite generous in this center portion. You don't want it to like gap when it's bending because then it just doesn't look good. I don't think it would come apart, but it just doesn't look as professional. Okay, so the big thing here is to um, make sure you line it up all the way to the top and bottom and get it where the... Um, where it's creased, that the creases are lined up. All right, hopefully I've done a good job. Because Rudolph deserves a great spine. Let's see, what do you guys think? I think it's looking pretty good. Um. I'm happy with it. You guys happy with it? I hope so. All right, now you do want to really let this dry, okay? Um, you're gonna have best results if, if it's had some time to dry. Um, we are making a video, so I may not let it dry as much as I normally would, but um, I encourage you to be a little patient. Go, go have a cup of tea. <laughs> Um, give yourself a little time to let it dry, okay? All right, I think it's doing well. All right, so hopefully now to, this is this is doing really well. Um, our cover is ready to go. Now this is gonna give you an idea of what this is gonna look like. We're gonna glue this to here, and we're gonna glue this one to this one. And then there's going to be your spine. Isn't that precious? I think that is really cute. And then you still keep um, the edges. Um, I've seen lots of people make them where they wrap something this way, right? And that's okay too. That's cute. Or maybe don't come over quite as far and don't miss as much of the picture. But when we do it this way, you still get that really nice full... Um, image from the original book. All right, so what are, how are we gonna stick it down? Well, same thing. Really generous with the two-sided tape and some wet white glue, and we're going to um, line it up very carefully um, as we go, all right? I do kinda like to hold it and make sure everything's looking the way I like it, and I do. All right, um, this is where I do have some name brand um, score pal, or I don't know how you say that, Suquang, um, the score pal brand. Um, I'm gonna use it even though it is, it's the only width I have, it's this quarter inch, just in case. <laughs> we don't want it going anywhere. And we'll, um, add this, we'll make sure we burnish it really, really well, get it into the fibers of the paper, and um, do everything we can to get it to hold on. So I think I'm gonna put a piece of the skinny um, on both edges, and then I'll use some of the fat to go down the middle, or the little bit wider. I think this is a quarter. No, this is a half an inch, and the one I have here is a quarter inch. I just need to order some. That's all. <laughs> all right. And I got a little bit of bubbling there, but I think it's going to be fine when I get it on and it dries. It looks perfectly fine when it's folded the way it's going to be. So I don't think it's a problem. 
Okay. La -dee -da. Um. All right. So while I'm laying this down, I guess um, I'll, I'll ask you guys some questions. So. First of all, or I'll ask you to make sure you have liked and subscribed. So if you like the video, make sure you like it. It really does help in YouTube world. Um, and subscribe so you don't miss out on any of my other crafty videos. And then um, let me know what you guys think of this one. If you think this was helpful, um, if you want to see more of how I construct and you know, journals and things, um, let me know if you have some special requests. I really do try to remember and, and keep a list of those. I know I haven't gotten to everything people have asked, <laughs> and I keep asking for more ideas, but I do love to hear your ideas and what you would find interesting or helpful to watch. Because... Um, I have lots of ideas, and I know what I like to make, but um, I'm sometimes surprised when people with, with what people ask for, and I don't mind um, trying to be responsive. So if you can let me know. Um, and I think I mentioned in one of my videos, I'm thinking about doing some, maybe starting some in-person workshops. Um, and if that's something that sounds interesting to you, I'd love to know that too. I just don't think there's that many opportunities locally um, or even to travel right to go to where folks can get together and um, learn some tips and tricks and how to use this type of journaling and art you know for healing so anyway if that's of interest to you let me know that too all right we're being generous with our glue we can wipe it off if we get a little too much. I went ahead and pulled the backing of the tape off both sides, but with the glue, we're going to do one side at, the at a time. If I hadn't been rambling, I probably would have waited to pull it off of this side, but it's okay. I can make it work. Okay. So, front cover... Again, I want to make sure I line it up really good because that makes a difference in how good the book looks at the end. And I actually do want to smush it down some. I didn't really like where I had it. Ooh, much better. Okay. So I'm pretty sure this is where I want it. Hope so, right? I'm pushing down. Um... It's nice and even and smooth, and you don't see that little bit of the, the little gap lip I was talking about. It's perfect. Okay. Um, and we are gonna really let this, this baby dry. Um, in fact, I'm gonna show you what I do. We're gonna add binder clips and all kinds of things um, and let it sit probably overnight. And we'll have to do a part, another part to this video, at least one more part two, um, to sew the signatures in. Um, we got to get all everything together for that, and get those organized. So I'll I'll add that, and we'll have a part two to this video, because um, this needs to sit and have a lot of time to dry. All right, so now we're gonna do the back cover, same thing. Really make sure we're happy and that it's nice and smooth and even. And really press it down the best you can. And keep double checking, because if you're ever gonna have a chance to add, make a little wiggle or add, it is now. Um, that was just the gold foil. I'm gluing back down a little bit better. Um, because it is not going to go anywhere now. Um, hopefully it's nice and secure. And everything looks good. You can see where we were missing a little bit of the gold foil there. Nothing we can do about it. And I'm okay with that. It gives it that older vintage look. All right, everything seems to be lined up pretty. 
All right, so what, what do we do now? We have to let it dry. And I am gonna use some binder clips to make sure um, it dries in place and nice and strong. Okay, so that's that. Um, probably gonna leave it about like that. And um, the next time we're together, we will make five signatures and sew them in. And then it's just the fun part of deciding um, how many pockets and extras and all the fun things and doodads you wanna put in there into your journal. So um, I hope you guys have enjoyed this video. All of this we'll need next time. And um, I'll see you then. Have a good evening. Don't forget to um, leave me a comment. Let me know what you think. Bye-bye.